good morning uh, dear students welcome to our session of uh, introduction to data structures and algorithms so in a previous session uh, we discussed uh, regarding uh, arrays strings and uh, we uh, started off discussion related to built in functions and uh, user defined functions so in which we dis uh, we discussed regarding uh, uh, how do we declare a function how do we define a function and how do we call a function uh, so these are the parameters what we had uh, discussed and we uh, saw uh, one function uh, which uh, we refer to uh, identifying the area of a rectangle <clears throat> so next we uh, discussed regarding uh, unions uh, unions and structures so structures and unions try to overcome the problem of array what is the problem of array the array uh, helps us to store similar kind of data types so if an array is declared for integer it can store only integer values it cannot store integer float uh, string or character all these together so in order to overcome such kind of problem what is done as uh, we can go ahead with structures and unions so therefore by definition in simple way i can just put forth as structures and unions are nothing but grouping of the different data types together and this entire group will form a single unit so whenever we are dealing with structures and uh, structures and unions right uh, we uh, have to look in for the declaration and initialization so we saw the syntax pertaining to the structure <coughs> so we saw how we uh, declare a structure and uh, how we uh, de uh, declare a variable pertaining to a structure so this is how uh, we uh, go ahead so syntax for this uh, syntax for this one is struct is the keyword so if you have to define or declare a key uh, declare a structure right uh, this is a user defined data type if you have to declare this user defined data type you have to use the keyword structure then give a name to that structure and define all the members of this structure uh, then uh, within the within the parenthesis you have to specify the members and after this parenthesis i can have a semicolon so wherein what you are telling is uh, you are giving the information that the name of the structure is this and these are the members which are present which will be present in this structure uh, so if i have to uh, declare a variable so for in a previous thing we saw that if i want to declare a variable of the type integer int a so in this one what it gave the information it gave the information that a is a variable of the type integer so now here what we have done you we have provided a user defined data type so how do i declare uh, variables which are of the type structure so in this case this structure uh, if i provide the name right it will be or it will be containing all these members so one example is provided over here struct book is the name of the structure and within the parenthesis you have defined all the members and you can see that these members are not similar type they are of different types uh, this is character but it is an array of characters therefore this is a string this is a string uh, this is a integer type this is float type so i can terminate it here itself with a semicolon no need to provide this also so this is one way of define uh, you telling that what the structure consists of that is the struct book so what this consists of now within this this itself i can have i can declare variables pertaining to struct book type so how do i do it i can do it in two ways one once you have declared this what you, what you have to do is if i have to declare data types of these so as i mentioned int if i want to declare i use the keyword int and then give the variable name so instead of integer if i want a data type of uh, struct book type then what i do is i type them as struct whatever name is there of that structure so this will be the uh, struct is a keyword and this is the uh, identifier of that structure so these two together will be utilized to declare the variables of the of the type struct book so i might write it as b1 so where b1 is of the type 
struct book. So that is what we are specifying. So that is here what you have done is you have declaring a variable book to which is of the type struct book. You can declare it like this or you can declare it along with this itself. So instead of uh, here putting a semicolon after the parenthesis, you give the name that is identifier book one and then you put the semicolon. So what is this doing? This is telling that um, book one is of the type struct book. So this is uh, what we had uh, specified. So now uh, once we have uh, declared uh, data type, uh, which is uh, user defined. So structure is a user defined data type now. Uh, so here, if you just see book one and book two are being declared, which are of the type struct two. Now in this, if I want to initialize these parameters, then for book one, book one, title member is different, author is different, pages is different and price is different compared to the title author pages and price for book two. So book one has its own param own members, book two has his own members. So uh, book one will be having all these four members, book two will be having his own four members. So this is how a structure deals with. <clears throat> Uh, so let us uh, see uh, uh, so and how do i access the members i access it with a dot operator i access the members of the structure with a dot operator so here if i want to access say uh, members of book 2 what i do is once i have declared it i'll write it as book 2 dot whichever you want to access book 2 dot pages and if you want to initialize it you can initialize it so this is how you initialize it so in this case you have to initialize each of the member separately <clears throat> so similarly if i write it as book one dot pages is equal to 20. so this pages will be pertaining to book one these member that is pages will be pertaining to book two both are different both will not be same so with the, this uh, aspect, let us see uh, a program. So here we can uh, see that uh, write a program that uses a simple structure to store students details. So if I have to uh, consider the student details in this case, what they have done is they have considered name of the student, whole number and the total marks what he has scored. So these are the informations what they are collecting in order to uh, store the information of the student. <coughs> so uh, here, uh, when I'm uh, dealing with the, such kind of data, you can see that uh, this part is uh, string relevant. This is uh, these two are integer data types. So if this is the case, then uh, I cannot go in for a single, uh, that is the uh, built-in user, built-in data types, what we had uh, discussed, that is integer float, so separately I have to do uh, and uh, this data will be common for all the students. So if uh, such kind of things come in, we go in for structure, uh, structure aspect. So how do I uh, go ahead with this aspect? So now again, uh, you include all the header files, then you uh, point out with the uh, main function and within the braces, which indicate the start of the program and this one indicates the end of the uh, sorry uh, the function main function then you declare the variables so here num and i are integer data types now for student information you have to declare a user defined data type and for this purpose they are using the structure parameter so here struct is the keyword student is the name of the structure which is given for this entire structure and then uh, what they have done is within this, you declare the members. So after this, within the parenthesis, within the parenthesis, you have to declare all the members. So here character name, which is array of 30 characters. It can store a maximum of 30 characters, including the null character at the end. So then uh, we have integer a roll number and integer say the total marks. So here you can see that this one is terminated here itself. 
it is terminated here itself so here what you are uh, what you are doing is you are declaring the structure but you are not uh, declaring any parameter any uh, uh, say uh, any uh, variable which is of the type struct student so you are just telling giving the information that what the structure consists of okay so these are the things so this is the structure what is defined now uh, say i have say 100 or 200 students then how do i go ahead with this aspect suppose if i want to declare uh, a variable of the type struct student then what i should do i should utilize this to declare the variable of the type structure so that is what is done here so struct student so this is uh, utilized so how you have done int num right this is like you are declaring int and you are declaring the variable name so here it is struct student and the variable what you are declaring is std so uh, this std is of the type structure student is of the type structure student now if i hadn't put this uh, 10 in this brackets and with that brackets are not there then it would just be a single variable now what we are doing is in this case as we declare integer or float right so how we have int a and if i specify like this so this a is a array which can store 10 elements which will be of the type integer so the same concept holds here so std is a array which can hold 10 elements within it and those 10 elements will be of the type struct student so this is what this uh, statement implies so std is a array which can hold 10 members or uh, say uh, 10 parameters which will be of the type struct student so ne next uh, what uh, they are doing is uh, they are uh, the in the program you are asking the user to enter the name of the students so here how do i access these members now how do i access it so if you just observe uh, we access it say uh, how many number of students you want to enter so maximum you can have 10 uh, 10 students entry over here because the array is defined only for 10 so here we have scanf person d you are accepting and storing that information in this identifier or the variable so you are suppose you might be just taking one student or two student so that information is present in at the num variable now what uh, since we uh, got to know how many students uh, you will be uh, uh, you will be how many student details you will be taking using that and the for construct what we can do is we can uh, take down all this information or we can note down all this information we can ask it from the user so here what we do we use the for loop and i is for the index for the for loop so initially i is equal to 0 and next what we are checking is whether i is less than num suppose in this case if i just enter that i want to accept two student details that is i want to just store student uh, two student informations so if i is equal to 0 i is this is stored in what this is stored in num variable this is stored in num variable so here if uh, this is the case then uh, what i have is i less than num then that is uh, whether 0 uh, is less than num yes 0 is less than 2 so therefore it enters and executes the for loop so here you can see that for loop is having the braces so what is this specifying this is specifying that all these statements belong to the for loop all these statements belong to the for loop so if this braces were not there then only only the first statement of this would be the part of for loop so now braces are there these all statements fall under the for loop so now next uh, what we uh, do uh, 
we ask the user to enter some of the information. So we are asking the user to enter the information. So that is if you just uh, come here. So first uh, in this case, he uh, uh, the user has entered that he wants to accept two uh, students entries. So enter the detail for student one. So that is if you just observe here uh, what we have enter the details for student person D. So which student you are accepting, you are accepting for the first student. So I can make use of this index. So now it is zero. So zero plus one will be one. So now it will be printing. Uh, you provide the name. So now I have to store uh, this information in this member. I have to store this information in this member. And again, uh, if I consider array, right, again, indexing will start from 0, 1, 2, and the last element index will be 9. In the same way, uh, if you remember, uh, if we had declared an array, say we had declared array of 10. If I want to access any member, how do I access it? Say I specify A of 2. So what is this telling? This is telling that I am accessing the third member of the array because index starts from 0, 1, 2 and so on. So if you just check, this is the first member, second member and this is the third member. So a index, a third member is having the index 2. So I'll be accessing the member, a third member of this array. And if I want to assign some value, I can assign some value to this. So 12 will be stored as the third member of the array and it will be having the index of two. Now so the same concept I'll be using since I have declared this structure as an array, right? So if you just observe, it is defined as the array. So if I write, uh, say, std of say zero, if I write this one, what is this indicating? I am accessing the first member of this array. I am accessing the first member of this array. So here what we have is I can have std of one, so on up to what? I can have std of nine. So zero to nine. Uh, which will make up to how many it will make up to 10 students uh, 10 student informations it is possible to store maximum so now here you should uh, you should know that this one is one separate structure which has its own members so std1 is a separate structure which has its own members so similarly all the 10 members which are there are different from each other different in the sense each of them has the members what you have declared so here it will be having its own name then what we have we have the roll number and we have the total marks so this one will be having uh, his own name roll number and marks so similarly all the elements will be having three three members each now, how do I access the members of the uh, uh, structure using the dot operator? So that concept is utilized over here. So you have printf, you are asking for the name. So user enters the name. So the first student name, what he has entered, he has entered it as Rohit. So here, uh, what uh, you use, you use canf. Now, since it is a string, if you just observe here, it is a string what you are accepting. So you uh, specify the uh, uh, specifier for the string that is percent, yes. So this information where it has to be stored, this has to be stored under the first student information who is indexed with zero. So this index, I can obtain it from I. So here, what I'm doing, student of I. So this is actually what, std zero. So this is the first student's information. In that, where I should store it, I should stay, store it under the member, uh, which is termed as name. So how do I access that member? I access it with the dot operator, dot name. So this name is under student zero. That is the first student's name. So that is what you are doing over here. STD of I, 
you are specifying this part which student you are accessing dot the name so next uh, you are asking for the roll number so this information has to be stored under this variable or the member of the structure so again you use the same concept so you uh, ask uh, you ask the user to enter so person d so this information will be stored under std of i that is std zero because i is equal to zero in the present situation std of i and uh, which member i have to access the first student's roll number the first student's roll number so that is what I am doing here. So similarly, we access the total marks. We access the total marks. So now once first student's information I have accessed. Uh, first student's information I have accessed over here. So now what I do is I go back. Uh, since uh, the for loop is ending over here, it goes and increments. So I increments to what? It increments to one. So when it increments to one, it goes and checks the condition. Whether one is less than two? Yes, it is true. So therefore for loop gets executed. Now remember I value is one. So now what happens? Again, you enter uh, the details for student one plus one. That is a second student's information. So in this case, what happens when you are entering the name? It is storing in std of i. So this one in the second iteration, when I go ahead, what is the value of i? i is one. So this is first student's information in that you refer to the member name and store that information over there. So in the similar form, you uh, uh, accept the roll number and the total marks and store it under first, uh, that is second student's information which is given by std of one. So in this way, this entire process runs. So once uh, you have come at the end of the uh, for loop, it goes and increments. Now I will be what? I will be two. Now is two less than two? This condition is false. This condition is false. Therefore, this for loop will not be executed at this moment. And, uh, uh, and it comes out of the for loop. So now uh, using the same uh, method, you can print the details. So here they have printed the details. So what they have done for i is equal to zero, i less than num, i plus plus. So here initially i is equal to zero, i less than num. What you're doing is you are printing the information of the student. So which student you are printing the uh, first and the second student's information, person D, what is his name, what is the roll number, and what is the total marks. So here for this person D, it will be I plus one, and name is obtained from where? Name is obtained from the index. So which students is obtained from I, and what you want to access, which member you want to access is specified over there. So person test name you want to access, so it will be student I dot name, Next one, you are you want to access the roll number student i dot roll number and total marks student i dot total marks. So this is uh, how it goes around. So this is how the structure uh, looks around for its operation. So this is uh, example pertaining to uh, the uh, structures. So here uh, uh, we uh, saw so how do we access the uh, members of a structure and even how we can uh, declare a structure as an array. So that is uh, what we have uh, seen over here. So now uh, next is the unions. So union is also almost similar to structure but with slight differences uh, which come with unions. So let us see uh, first of all what are unions. Again, uh, unions are nothing but a grouping of different data types together, which uh, form a single unit. That is, if I, as I saw previously, if I have to store names, then roll numbers and uh, say the average marks. So in this case, I'll be having string, then uh, I'll be having integer data type, and uh, then I'll be having say float data type. 
So if so, such things uh, come in, then uh, what we have to do is uh, we can go for either structures or we can go for unions. So now uh, union, uh, again in this, we'll be having the declaration and the initialization part. So let us see how the declaration uh, is uh, present. So again, uh, union, uh, the, uh, in order to declare a union, right, uh, we use the keyword union over here and then give the name of the union. So similarly, how we had done for structure, right? Previously struct was the keyword and then followed by that, the name of the structure. Then within the braces, within the braces, you specify the members of this union. You specify the members of the union and then you can have a semicolon. So this is the declaration of the union. And uh, now uh, uh, we can just see an example union. So result is the name of the union. In this you have integer character and float data type. So these are the members which are associated with the union, which is named as a result. So next, how do I initialize this? in the same way are uh, using the dot operator dot operator so if st1 is a union so if i have to declare a variable of the type union that is i have declared this if i have to declare a union of this type so again what i do is union result so this will be a kind of keyword what will be utilized to declare the variables of those types result and say st1 so this is uh, how i declare the variable associated with the union uh, so now uh, say uh, let us assume that st1 is of the type union uh, say uh, union over here so st1 dot roll number say we are assuming that roll number is also a part of this so i have to declare even that if this is the part so uh, roll a uh, number so st1 dot i am accessing the member of that union which is a roll number and you are uh, assigning some value to this member using the assignment operator so this is how you initialize the members of the union uh, so write a program to demonstrate the use of the unions so here we can uh, see uh, declare the uh, uh, headers which are required then uh, start with the main function and within the parenthesis you can uh, provide all the information so here uh, you have to first declare a union so this is also user defined data type so you are telling that this is the data what is required so you are uh, the user is declaring a, uh, a data type over here so here again union student uh, under the uh, within the braces what we have we have members which are associated uh, with this union that is integer roll number character result and uh, here we can see that we can either terminate here and if i want to declare a variable what i can do is i can declare it as i specified that is union uh, union student st1 comma st2 either in this way or once you have declared it here, here itself I can declare the variables of the type union student. So this is one way of uh, declaring the variables associated with union student, with the union student. And uh, this is another way. So once you finish over here, uh, after the parenthesis, you can specify the variables which are actually of the type union student. So both ways are fine. So now uh, if I want to initialize these parameters, so student one has his own roll number and result. Student two has his own roll number and student, uh, sorry, a uh, result. So st1 dot roll number, that is using the dot operator, I access the members and assign the values using the assignment operator. So next uh, you have to assign the result, so which is, in this case, it is of the type character. So only single uh, character will be assigned. So ST uh, here you are assigning what only for the second student so ST2 dot result P. So this is what you are accessing over here. Now, if you want to print it, you can use the printf function and provide the proper sp specifier and access the member using the dot operator and the name of the identifier used for that union. 
so this is uh, how you can uh, deal with in these cases so here you can uh, see that uh, in this part here if you just observe uh, what they are printing is uh, you have uh, in the previous uh, slide you can see that roll number of student one is assigned student one is assigned and result of student two is assigned but roll number of first student is not assigned and uh, uh, sorry uh, result of first student is not assigned and roll number of the second student is not assigned you haven't used the dot operator to assign any value so therefore what happens there will be a garbage value which will be stored over there so uh, here when you're printing this this will print since student one's roll number you have accessed it will print 20 and student two's result to have accessed it will print the p value now here what they are doing is they are printing student two's roll number you haven't initialized it so what happens is it will print some garbage value whatever value is present at that memory location will be printed so similarly student once result if you access it will be printing a garbage value over here it is not uh, that these values only will be printed any value can be printed over there so this will be the garbage values which will be stored if you haven't initialized uh, garbage value is some previous values which are stored in the memory locations which is unknown to us so that value will be printed over here So this is uh, pertaining to unions. Now, what is the difference between the structures and the unions? So if we uh, just observe, uh, first you make use of the keyword struct to declare a structure and the keyword used to declare a union is union. Uh, then uh, you can uh, specify how you can observe that uh, how the members are uh, provided to the structure and the unions it is the same way within the braces you are providing the members within the braces you are providing the members for the structure or the union so after this uh, if you uh, just observe uh, uh, you can declare structure using the struct and the key uh, the structure name and you can declare a variable of the type union and the union name by using the appropriate keywords by using the appropriate keywords that is in previous this thing example we uh, saw what we did so here what we did uh, here we declared the union and in previous example we saw that how we declared a structure so either this way or you, uh, you provide a student 10 over here so these are the two ways in which you can declare the structures and the unions so now uh, what is the difference other difference so if you just observe here so this is having two members character and float this is also having two members character and float over here and now if i assume that the character consumes one byte of space and float consumes say in this case it consumes four byte so similarly here also it will be consuming one byte and this also will be consuming four bytes now what is the memory which is utilized by the structure and what is the memory which is utilized by the union so here what happens is if you just observe uh, if i have declared a variable of the type uh, structure geeks for geeks so i have declared structure of this type so our obj is the identifier for the structure which is of the type struct geeks for geeks so now what happens is this object will occupy five bytes of the memory location, which is actually equal to four plus one byte. It will occupy the entire five bytes of the memory location. So this is uh, how it operates. But for unions, it is slightly different. So in unions uh, for float, what is happening is whenever you are declaring any object. So if I declare another object, obj1, another object, if I declare. So this will consume another five bytes. This will consume another five bytes because uh, here you can see that there are two members. One is of one byte and the other one is of four bytes. So you have to I add all the size of these uh, members. You have to add the size of these members. So that will give you the memory which is allocated to the 
variable which is of the type struct or structure so but for unions what happens is uh, the memory which is allocated to the object which is actually of the union type which is of the union type in this case it is of the union type so here what happens is this object will be allocated as a memory of the highest member so here this is one byte this is four byte so four byte is highest so what happens is that four bytes of memory location will be allocated to the union uh, variable which is declared over here that is obj now if we declare another object object one so this also will be allocated four bytes of memory lo uh, memory locations so here you can see that uh, whichever is highest that will be assigned that uh, amount of memory will be assigned to the variable which is of the type union but whereas in structure what happens is whenever you are declaring a variable of the type struct it will assign a memory space which is actually addition of all these members that is the size of addition of all these members so that is uh, these are the differences pertaining to the uh, structure and unions so here you can see that uh, in this case what happens is each very vari each variable uh, each member x and y each member has his own memory location so x will be consuming uh, one byte and y will be consuming four byte so here if you just observe there is no sharing of the memory happening between the members but in union sense only four bytes is allocated four bytes is allocated this four bytes has to be uh, say adjusted between these two that is uh, uh, it is like uh, this memory will be shared by these two members of the union it will be shared by the these two members of the union so these are few differences pertaining to structure and union so here you can see uh, what is the keyword you use to declare a structure struct and for union it is union what is the size uh, it is equal to the sum of the sizes of the members of the structure whereas in this one it is equal to the size of the largest member largest member in this union uh, memory uh, uh, what happens is each member will be allocated a unit memory uh, whereas in this case what happens is you have to share the memory between the members uh, so altering value altering altering the value of a member will not affect the members of the structure whereas altering the value of any mem any of the member will alter the other members value what is this indicating is since you are uh, say uh, sharing the memory right what happens is if you are altering some of the parameters over here then what happens is you'll be altering the other members so this is one thing what you have to remember so if you just see this is consuming four bytes this is consuming one byte and if i assign some value to a float right uh, say i assign it as 6.000 some value so it is stored in the memory location now if i uh, alter the value of x right then what happens is uh, it will alter the value even of the other member that is the float member which we have declared over here so these are just a few differences uh, what we can observe over here uh, so here uh, we can access the members uh, that is individual members at uh, any given point of time but here what happens is uh, you can access only one member at any given point of time so here either you can access this or this uh, but in this case what we had uh, we have obj.x and obj.y can be accessed at the, at the same time but in this case it is not possible because what happens is the values get altered over here uh, then uh, here we can initialize uh, several members at one go but here only the first member of the union can be initialized so whenever you are initializing it right so see that uh, only the first member gets initialized so these are just a few of the differences in structures and unions so now uh, let us discuss the uh, last point that is pointers 
Uh, so these are uh, also we can call that these are the derived data types because using the available data types that is integer then float character we can define pointers which point to those kind of data types so these uh, we, uh, we uh, these pointers fall under the derived data types uh, this pointer actually stores the address of a variable or a constant it stores the address basically it holds the address so uh, what does uh, this uh, specify that is it when uh, when the pointer stores the address it either points or indicates the location where another variable is stored so if i have a memory location and if i am storing a 20 uh, say variable a is there and you have assigned it with 20 so this value will be stored in a memory location. So if I have to access this member, I should know where its address is. So it will be assigned a address in the memory location. It will be assigned an address in the memory location. So this address information can be stored in the pointers. It can be stored in the pointers. So this is how I can just go around. So I have a variable which is assigned with the value of five. So if I am uh, writing the statement uh, int a is equal to five. So actually this is what is happening. So uh, what happens is a is uh, utilized uh, because users can remember this. Remembering the address, say address of this variable is 32054. Remembering the address in the program is very, very difficult. But remembering the identifiers in this form is easy. So if I tell that uh, it is a character name uh, and it's the array of the characters. So remembering that uh, name variable is easier than remembering the address. So therefore we go for identifiers. So here what we have a is equal to five. So this five has to be stored somewhere. So it will be stored in a memory location and this memory location for user, I can identify it with the variable name or the identifier a but this also will be allocated a memory space. So where this file is stored, right? It will be allocated a memory space and its address is given over here. So now uh, how do I access this address? I can access this address from the variable name. I can access the address from the variable name. So here you can uh, see that uh, if I have a pointer, if I have a pointer, say which is uh, identified as PTR, this pointer can store this address information. So this information can be stored over in the pointer. Now, since this pointer is also another variable, what you are declaring that it is a again an identifier. So this also will consume a space and this also will be having an address. So this is uh, this will not bother much now. So pointer basically will uh, just remember that it stores the address, say, of a variable over here. So here, 32054. So this is the address of the variable A. And what is the value in that uh, location? It is 5. So this is uh, what the pointer points to. Pointer indirectly points to the address of the variable. So how do I declare a pointer and initialize a pointer? So in order to uh, declare a pointer, I make use of the star operator. And uh, in order to initialize a pointer, I have to make use of the ampersand operator. So let us see uh, how do I uh, utilize uh, these two. So here uh, we have a variable a num which is of the type integer. So this is of the type integer and its value is in initialized to 10. Now, next you can see that uh, you are using a star and then you are providing some identifier name. So here, uh, use, this is how we declare a pointer int star ptr. So ptr is a pointer uh, because the star is present over here. So ptr is a pointer which will point to which will point to a variable which will be of the type integer. Now, if I have uh, something as uh, say float, 
star pointer say float if i write something like this so then what is this specifying this is specifying that since star is there pf what we have specified over here is a pointer which will point to float data type which will point to float data type a pointer which is declared for float data type cannot be used to point to a integer or any other data type it has to be used to point to float data type so this is one uh, thing what you have to remember when you are using pointers so pointer whatever you are declaring and uh, what type you are declaring it will be pointing only to that data type it can point only to that data type so here ptr will be pointing to data type which is of integer now how do i initialize the value to the pointer so this is the declaration so i make use of the ampersand so once i have declared this so ptr is actually a pointer and it can hold the address so how do i uh, use this so i specify ptr is equal to and uh, see here a uh, num is of the type integer so here what is the address of this num address of the num is given by ampersand num so when i put a ampersand in front of this variable i get the address of this variable i get the address of this variable so this pointer will be stored with the address information of the num variable so this is pointer declaration and initialization so next uh, uh, since uh, these are also uh, different uh, data types we can uh, perform some of the arithmetic operations using the pointers and also on the pointers also we can perform some arithmetic operations but when we are performing this we should be careful so that is what we have to look after so here uh, you can uh, see that using the pointers you are performing some addition operate operation a is assigned with star b plus star c so you are performing a mathematical operation using the pointers so here also you are doing the same and in this case if you just see on the pointers you are performing some mathematical operations on the pointers you are performing some mathematical operations so now one simple uh, way to uh, remember this is so here we have uh, done these all things how uh, in the statements how i can read it so here you can observe star i can read it as value at okay and ampersand i can read as address of so here you can see what we have done ptr is equal to ampersand of a so how i'll just read it just for simplicity we are just considering this it is address of this variable it is address of num so you're using that and storing it over here and when you are using it in the expression right uh, so if you just observe what is happening a is equal to value at this pointer value which is pointed by this pointer value at this location plus value at this location so this one is z is equal to z plus value at y value at y so now here what you are doing value at c will be replaced with the star value at ptr plus so when you are performing these operations you should be careful so here you can uh, just observe uh, how pointers are utilized in this case so here again declare the header files main function then declare a, a data type uh, say a is a variable of the type integer and uh, you are declaring a pointer variable which will be pointing to integer data type uh, you are assigning some value to uh, a that is you are initializing the value of a and in ptr what you are doing is you are storing the address of a so this is address of a is stored so when you uh, just observe in the print statement right uh, if you have to uh, print the uh, value pertaining to pointers you use the specifies percent u pointer information right you specify the uh, specifier as percent u so in this location whatever is present that will be printed so here address of a is equal to percent u so i know that address of a is present in present in ptr directly so if i print if i uh, if i specify ptr over here so this value should be printed over here so you can see that address of a is 65524 this is actually the address information of a now if i have to print the value of a 
So I can directly use either the integer a over here, a over here, or as I specified, you can use the star operator. So what is this telling? Value at this address. Value at this address you are printing. So here you can see that value of A is printed with the help of the pointer. So value at PTR. And next address of PTR, if you just observe here, so you can even print it using this operator. Uh, but in this case, what we are doing is we are printing address of the pointer. That is this variable what we have declared, right? Address of that. So if I want, to, want the address of that, I use address of PTR. So here, this is address of PTR is printed over here. Since you're printing the address, you have to use the specifier percent %u. And uh, since PTR holds the address, so the value which is present in the PTR, it is address. So again, you have to use the percent %u. So here, what happens is this one will print this address. This one will print this address. Okay, I'll uh, wind up uh, here. Uh, so let us uh, meet in the uh, next session. I think uh, this uh, uh, this one is uh, completed. Pointers. This part is completed. So in uh, next session, uh, we'll uh, meet and we'll start off with the next module. Okay, thank you.